it's working. I think it's working. Hey, that guy in aisle four, he's touching himself. <laughs> <laughs> and he owes me money. <laughs> Ew, but look at that quarter. He's giving me a sticky. Thanks, buddy. Yep. Appreciate it. <laughs> Ew. Uh, it's God. definitely on. Reach out. Reach out and touch someone. But be careful. Reach out and just say hi. Don't try to get more than that. Don't try. Not on the first date. Come on. Slow down, people. You know, just your lifestyle's way too fast. Are you hungry? You got a full heart on now, don't you? So you're just introducing yourself to the world. Hi, I'm Jay. I'm actually the bartender on this program. I've got my uh, flask here to, uh, to mix drinks, and I'm going to mix drinks here pretty soon for your edification and, and education, because I'm the, the resident mixologist here. Um, but I'm not going to mix one yet. I'll mix it one later, except maybe that'll be earlier, depending on when you watch it. So um, pay attention. Hello, world. We got a different way of living now. And that's what it's all about. We got a different way of living now, and that's what this show's about. Well, and who the hell are you? I am T. Black, the anarchist pierced clown of this episode, of this uh, series, of this world. I'm Christy Paxson, otherwise known as XY, Christ plus Y equals Christy. Well, I'm, I'm sort of your tour guide. Although I'm not going to like go to exotic places because we actually live in government subsidized <laughs> housing. So we don't actually have the money to go places. But, you know, we'll, we'll travel around. We'll find neat things, I, I promise. I mean, look, I make myself bleed. You know what I'm saying? I know how to have a good time. <laughs> Hello, I'm B. I'm actually the editor of this program. I'm kind of the uh, post-production guy. Uh, after the fact, behind the scenes, it may appear to you that I'm just some kind of poor, stupid Hoosier living here in government-subsidized housing uh, in this college town of Bloomington, Indiana, still pretending like I'm in college and not getting a real job after all these years. But appearances can be deceiving, and things are not always what they seem to be. Here in 1995, I'm actually a multimedia mogul, as exemplified by the fact that you're watching this now. Uh, hello. Hi, welcome. Hello, and welcome to Rocks. Well, hello, and welcome to Rocks, you mean? Welcome to uh, Rocks. Welcome to Rocks. Hello, and welcome to Rocks. This is a television program, actually. You're watching it right now. This is a TV show, actually. Independently produced here in Bloomington, Indiana. Dedicated to the proposition of doing everything wrong. Presenting it for you, the home viewer. Thank you for tuning in. Hello, hello. They don't really fit into the norm. Rocks, actually, is the name of the show. So here we are at the courthouse here in Bloomington, Indiana. It's uh, the seat of kind of the seat of governmental authority here in Bloomington. Um, you'll notice that there's a fish on top. That fish is actually surfing the internet right now, and uh, and it's about to um, eat you. So look out. Yeah, the, the Louvre and the whole freaking Washington D.C. The collapsing foundation of our country was built on the limestone that has been removed from under our feet, which is going to make us fall into the earth like a sinkhole. Yep, Bloomington, Indiana, known for its stone, stoned people at least. But there is one thing unique about Bloomington. We do have one of the only peace statues in any other courthouse in the United States. We are one of the few cities that actually has a memorial dedicated to peace. So, you know, we here at Rocks, the, the cast, the crew, the Rocks video troupe, as we've been referred to before, uh, you know, we've been doing this show for a hell of a long time, and uh, we've had a lot of fun doing it, really, here in Bloomington, Indiana, the heart of the Midwest, this land of limestone and cornfields. We've had a great time. We've done a lot of drugs, met a lot of people. But, you know, you know, frankly, we're kind of, well, we're kind of exhibitionists, I guess you could say. We love to see ourselves on TV, and so that's what this episode is all about, really. Putting a, digitizing a whole bunch of video, 
making it available to the entire world via the internet, the, the information superhighway. There's no mystery to it. It's simple. We're, we're making this video available to people. You may be watching this on cable access. You may be watching it on videotape. You may be watching this on your computer. You may be watching it on the evening news. But one thing is certain, no matter who you are, no matter where you are, you and the entire world will be able to view my penis. There ain't nothing wrong with the old ways. Rocks can be seen by an audience of over one billion people, thanks to the technology of the new digital highway. But just how does this miracle of modern science work? Your television station emits rocks in the form of invisible waves called cathode rays, which spread at over half the speed of light over one quarter of the planet's surface. Because these waves are invisible, you can't see them. The cathode rays are picked up by the camcorders of ordinary citizens in the Access TV network. The remote sensing device devices, or CCDs, installed in modern camcorders translate these invisible waves into the sights and sounds of rocks. But the rock's journey isn't complete yet. The amplified signals are sent to fiber optic telephone lines, uh, which translate the analog signal to compressed digital. Ironically, Indiana is the last to receive the rock's images and sounds. This is because the signals need to be back transmitted from the most distant cable stations in the access matrix, back step by step to the originating system in Indiana. So next time uh, you tune into rocks, remember that the show you love to see on TV has made quite a journey to get to your living room. So here we sit at this undisclosed location here in uh, the heart of the belly of Bloomington to, uh, to discern for you the, uh, the way that, the new way that we're pr producing this program and transmitting it into your brain. See, see, uh, see the old fashioned technology forced us to use these, tech, these primitive video camera things and shit. But now we have our special new device designed for us by by our, our resident scientist, Mr. Uh, Mr. G. Galpern guy. Um, this is uh, called our neural digitizer, and as you can see, what it does is you put it on your head, and then uh, you kind of tune these knobs here. There we go, there we go. And see, now what's happening is I'm actually transmitting um, this television program. No, it's, it's not working, man. It's, it's not, the light's not on. Yeah. Oh, wait a second. Let's... How's that? So as you can see, this light here is, is kind of giving power to uh, the transmission. And then I kind of tune in to your brain um, as, I, as I walk. Now, as some people know, um, it's a bad idea to have electronics on your head when you're standing in water. But that doesn't stop us global village idiots. What we are, what humans are, what uh, humans and animals and plants are, we're carbon life. We're based on uh, the carbon compound. And electronic things and robots and stereos and, uh, you know, the phone systems, things like that, they're silicon life. You see, the purpose of carbon-based life is to pave the way for silicon life. We go, we redistribute minerals. We dig things up and we manufacture things and move them around. We take, we take uh, minerals out of the Earth's crust and distribute them in a thin layer along the surface and wire things together with the phone system. Well, that's building the way, building building the nest for silicon life, making the world into a giant circuit board of layered minerals at the control of the silicon masters. Oh, hey, how's it going? I'm sitting here at my computer, actually, here in my office in this undisclosed location here in Bloomington, Indiana. If you want to get wired, so to speak, you have to have a computer. That's kind of a basic thing that, uh, that it takes to, uh, to, to really get into this information age global village bullshit. But then, of course, you know, you need some connection other than just, I mean, this box just sits here plugged into the wall. It doesn't actually connect you to the outside world. And for that, you'll need one of these. This is a, uh, a modem. Now, this, oh, ignore the brand name here because actually this one sucks, but, uh, but, you know, just understand that, that it takes a modem to actually connect you through the phone line 
to the outside world. And so the third thing that, you, that um, you'll need is, uh, is a, one of these, a coffee maker, um, so that you uh, can, well, I think the connection is obvious. So this drink that we're going to mix is going to be called blood, sweat, and caffeine. And uh, the reason for that is simple. Um, this, this drink is in honor of all the blood, sweat, and caffeine that went into creating this wire, wired world that we live in. So obviously the first ingredient is some blood. The, now this is simulated blood. It's grenadine, actually. Everything is simulated. Nothing is real. So uh, the next thing that you'll need, of course, blood, sweat, and caffeine, is, is some salt. Table salt is created by uh, getting a whole bunch of fat, sweaty men in a room and collecting their sweat and then um, crystallizing it into these little powders. Ah, um, so that's what you do to earn money. OK, so, so we've got some salt, we've got some blood, and the last thing, of course, is some caffeine. Now, um, this here is, is Colombian coffee. Because of course, um, you know, the, the, a lot of a lot of this wired world is built on the uh, the cheap labor of, of third world countries, and so so I guess a toast then to the wired world in which we live. All right, uh, the blood, sweat, and caffeine. A drink by Jay, the hardest working bartender in show business. You know, it makes me feel honored to be able to drink of the blood of my forefathers, to kind of stand on the shoulders of all the hard labor that went into creating these computers, making it possible for a global village idiot like myself to have access to all this worldwide information, most of which, of course, is pornography. <laughs> there ain't nothing like gigging. A good set of gigging, a good day of gigging. You like frog legs? Daddy, are we gonna go gigging? You gonna take us gigging, Daddy? You don't think it's gigging? Let's go gigging. See, we're out here I'll in the wilderness gigging for frogs. Because that's what it uh, takes for us poor dumb fucks to eat. Uh, ah, damn frogs, them got to be around here somewhere. Ah, ah, damn thing, what the hell is that? God damn. Daddy, they told you not to ah. go gigging so close to the road. Daddy, they told you. Ah. Ah. We got ourselves a gig doing this TV show on the internet. And uh, here on the internet. I got one. God damn. Got to get yourself a gig, see? A gigabyte. Yes, that's disk space for you infidels out there. Frog gigging. We've got a gig here doing gigging on our yeah. gigabyte of disk space here on the internet. Dang. Look, man, there's a frog over here for you. God. Where? No, no, over here. Uh -oh. T. Over here, looky, there's a frog perched right there on Jay's shoulder. Uh, dig it, uh, dig it. Dig it, you son of a bitch. Uh, oh, man, I feel uh, up uh, the uh, day, you uh, son of a bitch. Uh, uh, Surfing the internet. See, we're actually gigging on the internet, not surfing, you see. There is a difference, and it works, actually, because surfing isn't exactly the right way. I mean, you take your little mouse, you take your little arrow, you find the fucking frog you want, and you fucking jab it! Like you should do with all icons. Stab them and kill them. Yes! Cyber friend, and that's really this week's vocabulary word, is cyber friend. Now, you may be wondering, what's a cyber friend? Well, it's that right there. That, that's Mike Bone. For M Bone, as he's often been referred to. Now, see what happened here was Mike sent me this email, and uh, and I responded, and we just started talking, and and lo and behold, he actually materialized here on this chair by that other computer over there. Oh, zapped here. It's amazing how these things happen on rocks. Cyber is a word that's been put in front of, I think, every word in the English language now. Uh, just anything to do with computers. Yeah, also another word that gets stuck in front of a lot of things relating to computers is virtual. There is a difference between like a virtual friend and a cyber friend. It's kind of like the difference between like live phone sex and, and, uh, and one of those recordings or the difference between um, like a real person and one of those blow-up dolls. So this is a sexual relationship you have with M. Bone? Oh! oh. Uh, I didn't say that, no. <laughs> All right, well, here we are at the School of Education. This is a very prestigious building, as you see. It, it almost looks like a penitentiary, but, well, anyway. It is known as the Center for Excellence. AT&T, bless their little hearts, you know, they've done so many great things for the technology age. But they've got this, these kiosks, these informational kiosks, and I, I don't know what they're doing in the Center for Excellence. So, anyway, let's go look at them and, 
and see if we can find out something excellent. Thanks to AT&T learning through technology, okay, we can, we can help under, you know, understand this real technical world, you know. So let's see how AT&T is going to help shape us, you know. Well, this is world information. Um, I'm turning up the phone. Oh, this is convenient. They have a dial so I can, you know, not have too much noise or more as I need it. Except it, it doesn't work. I guess this is just more or less a decoration. Remember phones, AT&T, buy a phone. Here is the uh, Education Electronic Bulletin Board. Whoops, whoops, I didn't get that. Can I go back here? Do I go to home? Maybe scroll lock. Uh, maybe page up. That'll help me get back up there, no? The phones, try the phone. Maybe this will help me. Hello? Hello? They've done it again. They've put another phone here. And there's no reason. That darn AT&T. Art showcase. Yes. God, and you know, this is better than going to oh, a gallery. Oh, that is beautiful computer art. OK, here's campus information. This this kiosk. And I, there are three phones. Three. All right. OK. Hello? Hello? How about here? Hello? 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 They're playing a game. They're playing a game. It's number three. It's number three. OK, funny joke at AT&T. I get it. They're communicating by joking, you know, using humor to break the ice. OK, love it. <laughs> Crazy people. Kiosk. Hi. Hello? Uh, OK. Not learning nothing from this one. OK. People learning through technology. And you touch the screen. Oh, the I can't, I'm too That's short. Oh. oh, God, I can't, my eyes, I can't make them line up there. I can't, how do you, okay, here. God damn, it's like, oh, there's, there's there I am. Wow. That's, where, where? There I am. I can't see shit. I think I want to try putting on a mustache. You know, I bleach my facial hair, but sometimes I can't. Oh my God, this is not realistic at all. There you go. There's a mustache. Oh. You can put a mustache on your little invisible face. Wow. Well, see, now you can see the mustache, but you can't even see my face. How about these sunglasses? Oh God, no one's going to recognize me when I rob Kroger. You know, Bandages, Christy. This is great. Yeah, I can see what it would look like if I committed a crime. Oh, I got a second mustache by accident. Oh God. Well, that's what you'd look like if you were a mummy. People learning through technology. The blue information kiosk globes. Making the world a brighter place through subservience to the machines. Ah. It's OK to diss AT&T every now and then, because, you know, they too need to be reminded that they don't know it all. So if you think our shit is stupid, you should check out some of the other stuff out there on the World, we world Wide Web. Um, this this uh, here is a printout uh, from the Zima homepage. Now, Zima, as you can see here, is a clear malt beverage with natural flavors. And it, and here on the Zima homepage, which is at uh, www.http, you see it on your screen there. I'll, I'll let B edit that in with his clever um, techniques. Um, anyway, they have all these Zima drink recipes, like the Zima Fizz, the Z Martini, the Zima Fuzzy Navel, and the Z Margarita. We're going to make one that we thought was uh, particularly appropriate given what we think about this shit Zima. The Zima Slime Ball. Now, you want to just add about uh, half a glass of this stuff. It, it fizzes up almost like Sprite or something. And the reason for that is simple. Zima is a new and versatile beverage, according to the Zima homepage. Light, trendy, devoid of harsh alcohol flavors, and easy to drink. Its clear, sweet taste and strong effervescence do not tyrannize the palate. And so, as such, is the ideal choice for the inexperienced drinker. The so inexperienced? In other words, well, what are you doing with it, then? Yeah, well, well, this is kind of a drink, I guess, for, for young people who don't, like, don't yet like the taste oh, of yeah. uh, Jack Daniels or something. Candy you know, like, for children. Yeah, exactly. The, the next thing that you want to add to the Zima slime ball is, uh, is some, some of this stuff. It's, it's uh, lime jello gelatin dessert. Mm. The, the directions that they have on their homepage are conspicuously uh, unspecific about what you're supposed to do here. But as close as I can tell, you're just supposed to pour it all in. And so uh, we want to do that. Um, and you can see that uh, what you come up with here is some kind of like uh, moving blobby green slime ball. slime ball mess. Wow, it is really like gelatinous and, and gross looking. Oh, God, this is terrible. 
God, what were they thinking? Well, you must have read the instructions wrong. Or let's something. let's you see. Consult back let's there. Double check your information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's always important in the information age. Just double checking. The Zima slime ball. Now it's continued on the. Oh dear. Oh dear. Um, B. Um, I think we've been played the fool here. What? Um, I, I don't think this is actually the real Zima homepage. I, I think this is a joke. Kind of like this TV show, I guess, so it, maybe it's appropriate, but... Well, you mean... I don't think it's official, man. I thought we were going to make fun of Zima and how stupid they were for putting these stupid recipes on. <laughs> oh, I guess we have to make fun of ourselves for being so stupid as to fall for this this really funny joke that somebody's put up here. But Ian well, McFarland. Yeah, this this guy, Ian Mark McFarland. Well, you should link to this homepage and look at it if you're on the World Wide Web, but... As I noted before, if you're not, you're fucked. <laughs> Jeez, ow, man. This is computer reality. I don't know much about computer reality. I know it's going to bring about the downfall of the human race. So I'm trying to strengthen those remnants, as remnants of the human race. Remnants of the human race. Uh, so that way, when it all shuts down, the computer finally goes, whoop, there'll be a few of us left. Ultimately... All this computer shit is going to lead to our demise. Uh -huh. You will wait. They will know everything that we do. They will map everything. every move will, you make. Every move, every cake I bake, they can all that shit. They can up into the computer and say, oh, this person is there. Yeah, and I'm not into that at all, OK? It just makes me sickened that Rox is going to be part uh -huh. of this evolution toward the computer control. Frankly, I've, I'm, I just don't want this to happen. I'm not going to be part of it. Wait, well, no, you like to control it, your image, it, right? It, it, so, you know, um, people have said that, that television has no place on the Internet. But, of course, you know, really, we have no place on television then. So, it's a good thing, really, that the first Internet TV series should be us. Because, after all, Rox is not like other television programs. We're small time. We're independent. Um, we're different. And if you've watched the show before, you know that. Bathroom wall. Writing utensil. <laughs> All right. You know, if, it, if you had the 3D glasses, it'd probably like go because it's that red and green. Oh, Heil. Satan. Satan. They communicated with us. And graffiti on bathrooms wa walls have, has been a uh, form of communication since the beginning. Communicate with everyone, because we're all, we all use the bathroom. Therefore, we should all use the bathroom wall. Find the nearest bathroom wall near you and communicate with us. God damn, considerations of time, space, narrative, pacing, drama, music, sound, color, luminescence, chrominance, resolution, definition, speed. A multitude of moods and scenes flow past me and surpass me, excite me and delight me, please me and depress me, disappoint me, astound me and confound me, reveal to me certain things I wish I'd never knew. But I keep executing edits hard, like a college student's credit card is used to spend his parents' money to buy our tapes. No, I'm no dummy, because I know how to work the system. It just takes some patience and a steady hand, a keen eye, a cold heart, a pocket full of cash, a baggie full of hash, long hours of hard work, connections, inspiration, love, energy, time. I'm T Black. This is my band. We are Kearney, punk rock for the information age. 30 second songs or less sound bites. This is our song, Fuck. Uh, I've got a spike in my nose. Coleman has got a ring in his dick. And Kearney is Lord. Let's rock. F U F U C K Fuck!
So the irony is that I don't even have a computer. I can't afford one. But I do have access to a lot of these machines. I know some of the right people. And that makes all the difference. Connections. Ah, uh, so here we are in the cyber realm. We're using a graphical browser called Netscape to look around on the World Wide Web. Uh, here you see Indiana University's homepage. But uh, let's check out The Rock's homepage on the World Wide Web uh, so that those of you who are watching this on cable will have a chance to see what Rock's is going to look like on the Internet. Now, you got to understand that Rock's is no longer a time slot. It's actually a place, a location that you can visit uh, at your leisure as often as you like. It's called The Rock's Quarry. Now, I'm actually speaking to you four days before the premiere of Global Village Idiots. So we're only looking here at a developmental version. So if you want to see what it really looks like, you're going to have to check it out yourself. But as you can see, it's more than just television now. It's actual, uh, it's a multimedia festival to delight the mind and the eye and all that shit. We've got uh, pictures, we've got text, we've got audio, and uh, of course video, the actual video segments of this show will be broken up into globules that people can download onto their home machines to view at their leisure in whatever order they want. So you're just introducing yourself to the world. Hi, I'm Jay. I'm actually the bartender on this program. I've got my uh, flask here to, uh, to mix drinks, and I'm going to mix drinks here pretty soon for your edification and, and education because I'm the, the resident mixologist here. Um, but I'm not going to mix one yet. I'll mix it one later, except maybe that'll be earlier, depending on when you watch it. So um, pay attention. So if you're watching this on cable television, that's the end of the show. It's over. But if you're watching this on your computer, well, it may just be the beginning. And the next thing you know, you'll be doing something crazy like sending us money. But note that on cable television, we can't ask for you to send money. We can only accept it.